recording. Okay. Okay, let's get started here. Three, two. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, thanks for you. Let's try that again. All right. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for tuning in as we are in discussion, as you can see the title of this video, talking about God, God and guns. Uh, so let's just start right off the bat here. You know, this is this is Mark. Uh, he has his own YouTube channel. Information will be down below. This is actually our second collab that we're doing uh, here. So, Mark, thank you for joining us this this evening, I guess, for us. Just depends when you watch the video. But. I guess, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't get more American than gotten guns, right? Yeah, yeah. And actually, it, I'll bring this up when we do your video, but talking about censorship, this is something that puts it right at the bottom of the pile for YouTube. <laughs> They'll hide this. Anyways, <laughs> you anyways think so yeah, probably because yeah, it's two different thing, two things that they don't want to make popular or whatever. I don't know. What, anyways, I want to just their algorithms. Yeah, yeah. I just want to start out by asking: Do you own any guns, Mark? Well, you see, my dad passed away all oh, five plus years ago. Okay. Wait, but... wait, how many? What about you, though? Do you own any um, guns? That was actually a trick question because hello, ATF. I'm not telling you because they'll watch and they'll find out. So what you just everything you just told me, I'm going to bleep out just to protect you okay. as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I'm not going to say whether I own any guns or not. Well, Montana, like you don't even have to register if it's a private yeah. sale. You yeah. don't even have yeah. to register. And so it's. Yeah. And that's, you know, see that Montana. as we talk about gun ownership, some numbers to throw at you, uh, 393 million guns in the United States is estimated. That's how much there are more guns in the United States than there are U S citizens. Um, you know, with and with this election right now at this current point we don't know exactly well it's interesting that the news is still calling calling biden the projected president elect they're still calling him the projected instead of just the president elect which is interesting so we're still i don't know what's going to happen here in the next few months or whatever but um it, it if the way things go the way that things have been going if they go forward and biden becomes president you know we've had a lot of people uh, with that administration, pretty much every election where it looks like a Democrat might win, that gun sales soar super high, but especially in the last six months or so with all the riots and everything, gun sales have just been yeah. just just been up because people look at the riots and they look at cops kind of like mm -hmm. pulling back in those riots and like, how are yeah. they going to protect themselves? So, so gun sales ship in the United States has gone up. But today what we're talking about it's how, how do guns fit in to our relationship with God? And as, as we ask this question, it's something uh, it, it, we realize that a gun is a tool and there, there are many different ways to use that tool. Just like uh, there, you can use a bunch of different tools or a bunch of different things for a gun. You know, there's, there's hunting. I think that's the main thing people think about when they think about guns. But there's also a few other things. There's there's competitive shooting where people will go to these competitions and and test how accurate they can be with a gun. You know, there's there's a ton of different categories for competitive shooting. There's three gun contests. There's you can look up videos for people they shoot like wild wild west type of shooting where they'll have a, a, a revolver holstered and then they'll that the competition will be as fast as they can shoot that revolver. Um, uh, the long distance shooting competitions, you know, handgun shooting competitions, all these different type of competitions. So that is another category of using guns. And then the thing that gets argued the most and what we're going to focus on today is the kind of that self-defense slash 2A category. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. And the reason for that is because I don't think many people would argue against owning a gun for the purpose of competition shooting or uh, hunting. There's not too many people who would argue owning a gun for that. Uh, well, especially Montana and North Dakota, like yeah. zero people really. Yeah. Um, yeah. When you get into other States, there might be some people even for yeah. that, I would think. Yeah. And so really, you know, what we're talking about today is 
essentially taking a life using a gun and how that fits in with Christianity. That's kind of, you know, you hear that question, you're like, okay. <laughs> and so I'll hear right now up here in one of these corners, there's going to be a, a, a video popping up or a link popping up of our last video that we did together because in our part four, we talked about the Revolutionary War and whether it was right for a Christian to serve in the Revolutionary War war at that time. And that's that, that has to do with guns. And that's really the two-way aspect of it, where you're, the two-way aspect is self-defense, but also keeping the government in check or overthrowing that government. And so that would be linked up top. But in that video, I gave two instances where as a Christian, I felt it was right to overthrow the government and the other one where it wasn't. And I used, Mark, if you remember, I used Nazi Germany as one. If you're a you were a German in Nazi Germany and you heard or you found out about those concentration camps. I think at that time, because of the loss of life that was happening there, it would have been appropriate to use guns to overthrow the government. But then I did go to the Revolutionary War and I was, I, th I think I didn't even answer. I said, I don't know about that one. You know, I don't know if I, if I feel like yeah, it'd be I, right for a Christian to step up and do that. You dodged that one for sure. Yeah. I did. Yeah. You didn't, I don't, yeah. did you even answer it? I don't even know if, if you answered it no, or not. I, I, I said, you know, if you could, um, what's the word I'm looking for? If, if you could support a revolution in 1776, you could support one today, hands down. Okay. And I wouldn't support one today. So no. Um, and yet, you know, with Hitler, is it like an overthrowing of the government or is it like go assassinate Hitler kind of thing? Yeah. Yeah. Is that, and so even the stance there, you know, if you're a Christian, could you assassinate Hitler there. Um, I, I would say, well, that's probably something for the government to do. Mm -hmm. um, could any person, you know, in Germany or anywhere just say, Hey, we're going to go assassinate Hitler now. You know, you have to think through that. Yeah. And then, well, then you have to apply that same standard to every other leader. Well, you know, apply it to leaders today in, in different places. So. I, and I think uh, the main, so, and we're going to get into that. That's going to be our first thing that we're going to talk about where it is, I mean, owning a gun for self-defense or, or that two-way part, you know, taking life. Um, so what we're going to talk about first here is if there ever a time where like, in, it's okay to take someone's life. And so I, I'm going to go first on this. So Mark, you have some time to think about this. Yeah. Uh, for me, I look at, I look at scripture and there are times in scripture, we definitely first off see that, that life is sacred, especially in the old Testament where, uh, they had the principle of an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Um, it says in Genesis chapter nine, verse five through six. And for your, let me, let me, I have this in my notes here. And for your lifeblood, I will surely demand an accounting. I will demand an accounting from any for every animal and from each human being too, I will demand an accounting for the life of another human being. Whoever sheds human blood by human, by humans, their blood shall be shed for in the image of God has God made mankind. And so we read that and I'm not using that to argue for today using self-defense, but just to point out that life is sacred. We are all made in the image of God and back under the old covenant, this was uh this was seen if you took someone's life and it was pre-planned and it was murder, then your life would be taken. And I and I an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth principle. And it it's interesting how that happened because this wasn't the case the whole time. This wasn't the case before the flood. Uh, you know, we think about Cain and Abel, um, the first recorded murder in in biblical history there. And what happened to Cain? Was he put to death? That's okay. Rhetorical question. No, 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 he wasn't put to death. And I think during that time, that was because those people, uh, they were meant to populate the earth. And so that would have gone backwards from what was meant. Mark, I see you kind of questioning that. Yeah. So I don't, God <laughs> yeah. could have easily just wiped Cain yeah. off the face of the earth, but he didn't, he didn't do that. And he did more than that. He made sure that other people wouldn't kill Cain. Well, and I would just say God's sovereign over whether he chooses to enact the death penalty in, mm -hmm. in those instances and in other instances with Cain and Abel, God doesn't enact it against Abel. And there's other places we can see in scripture where it should have been inactive, 
it wasn't god didn't enact it you know with king david he could have been yeah uh, you know wiped uh, wiped out <laughs> into the yeah, earth. <laughs> for sure but but god in, in his sovereignty said no i've still yeah. got plans for you i'm still um sovereign over it and he said no i'm sparing your life and even the the woman caught in adultery to a large mm -hmm. degree and there's people and picking up stones and jesus christ says nope your sins are forgiven yep. and he in his sovereignty says no you know you're, yeah you're forgiven go sin no more and, be um, and before we get into the new testament too much there's some you know there's some verses especially in the mosaic law uh of just this you know defense self-defense instances one of them is exodus chapter 22 two through three and i'm going to ask you this question mark you'll have to answer this one yeah why is it? it let me let me read it if a thief is caught breaking in at night and has struck a fatal blow the defender is not guilty of bloodshed but if it happens after sunrise the defender is guilty of bloodshed why do you why do you think that is the bloodshed it has to do with intent, if someone is coming to your place and their intent is to harm and kill and all that, mm. you can take, you can defend yourself and take your life. There's no place in Christianity that says, you know, you have to roll over and die and yeah. not defend yourself. Uh, you can't, it's a serious thing and Christians should think about it seriously. Mm. But, I, I agree with that. I, you know, back then we remember they didn't have electricity, they didn't have lights like we do today. So they, their light at night was oil lamps and fires that's how they saw at night and it can be hard to see what's going on so for this passage if a thief is breaking in at night you don't know whether they're coming to steal something from you or whether they're coming to do you harm to to kill you but during the day and this is interesting too during the day you can see what their intent is and so that also shows us that in mosaic law it was not robbery or or, or stealing of something was not worthy of taking someone's life in the mosaic law. So we see that kind of both sides of that there. Um, and so that's kind of the old Testament. They're just saying, Hey, life is sacred. We are all made in the image of God. It is important to keep life. And so, you know, we see there in the old Testament that even, you know, defending yourself or defending life from someone that's coming to take it is appropriate as well. But then you go to the New Testament because we're under, do you have something to say? Yeah. Well, okay. and if you talk to policemen, they'll say uh, things like that. It's way more common at night mm -hmm. than during the day. Um, and yet if someone breaks into your house during the day and their intent is to kill or harm or, or that kind of thing, can you defend yourself during the day even? We will talk about that. We got some scenarios at the end of this that we're going to run through and we'll talk about it there. But let okay. me, yeah. let me go to, yeah. So be thinking about that. Let me go to the New Testament here uh, because we are living under a new new covenant and why I feel that when it comes to saving your life or not saving your life, but saving others' lives when someone is coming to try and take their lives by taking that person's life is appropriate. Um, in Matthew chapter 22, verse 36 through 40, a lot of people know this. Uh, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the laws of the prophets hang on these two commandments. So if we break these things up here, let's focus on the first one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your mind. If you're doing that, um, you want, you'll want to try your best to uphold what he stands for as well. And one of those things that he stands for is justice. And so that doesn't necessarily mean in the action, that'd be like a post thing, like a crime committed and you're after the crime is committed, upholding justice, I think. But then the second part would be loving your neighbor. So Mark, let me ask you this question. You have a neighbor and we, we learn in scripture that everybody's our neighbor. There's nobody that's not our neighbor. Everybody's our neighbor. Your neighbor is, is hungry, and for some reason, you have a surplus of food at your house that you are able to, to provide for them, to give to them, but you don't. You have the power to help them out, but you don't. Is that loving your neighbor? No. And I, you know, using that, that argument, I would say that if someone is coming to harm your neighbor, take the life of your neighbor and it's within your power to stop that from happening, but you'd let it happen. I would say that that's not loving your neighbor 
either. Um, what do you think about that? What are your thoughts on that? And that gets pretty, uh, uh, it depends how far someone takes that. Yeah. Cause you know, in, in Montana, we've got even like malicious farming and their whole thing is, well, if there's people that come here and they have, um, violent intentions, you know, from out of state Antifa or, or whatever, um, it, we've got to defend ourselves and you could go a step beyond that and say, Hey, um, other people need to, to join. If you're a Christian, you need to join because, Hey, this is about loving your neighbor, defending, you know, towns and, and all that. And that, you know, this is Montana talk because when the riots were breaking out and stuff, you know, rumors spread, you know, nowadays, especially yeah. with media and all that. And people are saying, Hey, you know, this group Antifa or this violent group is coming to Montana. We've got to form a militia. We've got to do this to, uh, to love our neighbor, to protect, you know, the community or whatever. And so even, you know, applying principles, it gets a little bit messy when, when you apply them to just everyday circumstances and everything. Yeah. I think for me, when I was saying that I meant uh, in my scenario, it wasn't like overthrowing the government or protecting the community. It was like, uh, you're packing and a shooter comes into a store and starts shooting it up and you got you got local shoppers that are there with you that are losing their lives that's that in my mind that's what it was